Jeremy Cook here, and today I'll be laser cutting an articulated camera stand. The camera stand doesn't actually move on its own, but it looks super cool and gives you several axes of rotation. Pretty awesome, I think it's gonna be really helpful in some of my upcoming projects to film everything. Now you can see kind of how it moves around here and thanks to the magic of stop motion. Looks really cool. Perhaps I will think about actuating one of these with a servo or stepper in the future. The concept was actually conceived of by another YouTuber called Pocket83, and I decided to practice my laser cutting with it. So if you do see some flaws, pay no attention to them. Well put, Pocket, and I'd say that applies for anything on this channel, but especially in this one, because when I was first developing this, I just thought I'd cut out a few links and try to develop my laser cutter skills a little bit more. Took, a, took quite a journey, actually, and after I'd cut a few, once you design it on this, it's, it's easy enough to make one more, or two more, or three more, you know, a whole arm. Pocket, of course, did every single one of these by hand, so if you want to see how he did it, definitely check out his channel. So this is some of the first cuts that I made. It looks really disgusting, making all kinds of, all kinds of fumes and such. The, the short of it is, is that my, my lenses or my mirrors were not clean. I'll show a little bit about that later although plenty of people do plenty of good videos on that concept. Nonetheless, I was able to cut these out sufficiently enough to kind of get the concept. Speaking of cleaning lenses, I, I just finished the wool books, which are really, uh, really pretty good. It's all about cleaning the lenses, and if you don't clean them, then chaos ensues. In this case, it's just, just some extra fumes and something you can correct. But if you don't do that, you just keep on getting more and more fumes and it gets worse and worse. It's like a vicious cycle. The pedal here is that you gotta, gotta scrape it off with some sandpaper. Or, or clean the lenses, of course, which I know now you're supposed to do. Nonetheless, with this laser cutter, I was able to make these square holes, which a little bit harder to do on manual tools. I guess you could use a brooch or something, but with that, I was able to make this concept with carriage bolts, so push that in there and you just have to tighten the other side with these these nut things that Pocket, uh, Pocket also showed off in his video. I had a little bit different take on that, so I'll show how I made it a little bit later in this video, so hopefully you'll get something from that as well. Before I realized I needed to clean the mirrors, I tried to increase the power, put it up to 75%, I believe, and then decrease the speed somewhere around 2.5 millimeters per second. This didn't really work that well, even though I was able to somewhat punch through and like the Dr. Dre album, it's, it's still smoking. If you're not getting clean cuts, this is kind of a vicious cycle because your lenses are, are, or your mirrors are dirty. You're getting more and more smoke on them and they just get dirtier and dirtier and just gets worse and worse. There's the lens after I clean it, the first one. There's a second one there and a third one back and back closer to the actual laser tube. I clean these off, you know, there's other videos about people that have have cleaned these, probably with more experience, but I did make a tool for taking out the first mirror that you might find useful. The STL's up somewhere and you can download it and use it yourself, but we'll explore that presently. The design has two holes for roll pins as well as a cavity in the middle for a magnet, so you just hang it up when you don't, you're not using it anymore. These roll pins, I pressed that in with my vise and you can stick it into the, the mirror holder thing. Some of these apparently are, are flat and you could put like a, like a piece of metal in there, but this, you know, you could buy a tool for this, but I didn't want to wait a month for it to get here from China, obviously. Take it off and goes back on. Hopefully that's helpful to some of you that don't want to wait a long time to take your mirror off. So with all that done, I was able to cut much better. I was able to punch through with 68% power and six millimeters per second. I could maybe even go slower, I'm not, or maybe even go faster and less power, I'm not really sure. If you're wondering why I don't use 100% power, is it just, it just ends up being too much for the laser. I put an ammeter on that in another video that I'll, my intro video that you can check out if you want. It's got some interesting mods and setup, setup techniques that you might find interesting. With that, with that really tuned in though, you can it's pretty much just, just push it out there. It's, it's really easy. No sanding required. There's a design in light burn. You've got six millimeters per second slash 68% power. There's all the lengths of MDF 
the adapters, everything else, spacers, etc., etc. The thing in the upper right hand corner, those two pieces are meant to be what actually fastens a carriage bolt to the to the ball head on the camera itself. I actually 3D printed that, and that's just a wooden version that I haven't tested out. But maybe maybe you'd like to try it yourself. There's the adapter that switches it from horizontal to vertical or, or vice versa actuation. And there is the carriage bolt, push that in. Actually use the, the vise to push that in. It goes nicely, that goes nicely. And whoa, I forgot holes from this. But as I said, I 3D printed it, so it takes a while, but it's pretty much just hands off. So got a couple bad versions there and then there is the correct version. Everything fits together nicely and then putting everything together here, that, that end piece that'll fit over a two by four. It's an inch and a half in from one length to the other. Got those circular spacers in the middle and then that's another link there. Looking good. And then there's the 90 degree adapter. Let's go from horizontal to vertical actuation. And then another length. And then on in the front of that is the adapter for the actual ball head for the camera. Looking good. And let's see how it slides on to the actual two by four. You saw this bench in a previous video where I put some magnets on it to hang this off, but the two by fours for the shelves make a nice, nice, a nice shelf for everything. Really secure, obviously. So the frame is called two by four basics and I would, I would recommend them. They, they seem to be pretty good. Goes front, front, back or side to side, up, down, etc., etc. And when it's locked down, it, it doesn't really vibrate. It's it's really great. As I mentioned earlier, I made a lot of mistakes while doing this and yeah, it gave me a chance to get used to my laser cutter a bit more. This is probably my first really big project that I did on it. I mean, really big, I guess it's all relative, but big-ish. There's Pocket's version of the nut thing, the nut what, or nut, nut knob he called it. Basically you take a half inch bolt or a quarter inch bolt and press it into a half inch bolt with a with a vise. Pretty easy concept, but hard to execute. Use these flat hardened pieces to make sure it didn't didn't just chew it up too much on the sides. He used a hammer to get it in, but I, I didn't use that. I found that to be tough to do. Another thing that I thought was a good idea is to use a tap on it because it tends to kind of, it does something to the threads. I guess it collapses them a little bit on the inside. So use this tap on it and makes it nice and smooth after that. I suppose this is somewhat optional, but if you want it to be really easy to use, I would definitely recommend this. Screw that in and look at that. It looks beautiful. At least it would if my camera focused correctly here. All right, so if you're wondering about the actual ball head adapter, I designed this in Fusion 360 as one piece and 3D printed it as, as you saw. This works out pretty well, but if you notice here, it's basically like two quarter inch pieces that could be cut out on a laser cutter. Since you have a laser cutter, obviously if you can do this, I thought it'd be good to transfer this to that. So go to drawing, make a drawing out of this, yada, 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 inches, why not? You'll see that's a mistake later. Make sure you get the right surface. So that's a side there, go to that, go to the bottom save that as a DXF, X export as a DXF, and yeah, okay. Gotta name it something you, you recognize. And then you can open it up with CorelCAD, which is, if you haven't heard of that, it's like AutoCAD, except quite a bit cheaper. So I like that, I like cheap stuff, or inexpensive, I should say. But look at that, looks like I made a mistake about this got the scale off instead of inches, I guess it was millimeters or vice versa. So what I do, you type in scale, enter, and then scale factor is like 0 0.0393 something or whatever. Basically one divided by 
to, you know, one inch per 25.4 millimeters. Kind of a guess there, but it looks like it worked out okay. If you try this yourself, you can, you can let me know if, if there's a problem with this or not. Put that on there and you copy it. Basically, you make a copy of this. And in one of the copies, you take out this square. One of the copies, take out the circle. And you'll notice I'm doing a lot of typing here. I, I tend to know most, most, I won't say most, but a lot of the text command on AutoCAD. So that's nice when you're switching between systems. You can just type it in. You don't have to worry about the, the GUI. Other nice thing is if you have some coworkers that use AutoCAD, you can use like these crazy commands like M button pan equals zero, if I remember correctly, which which makes your uh, mouse button not pan correctly. Or you can use zoom factor equals, change it to something else. Do that to your coworker and they'll, they'll never figure it out. Actually, tell them to watch this video. I'd love to, you know, help solve the problem that I helped create. Yeah, if, if you are watching this and I helped you solve the problem, then definitely leave me a comment because that would be really interesting. Anyway, if you're tired of hearing about this uh, text-based stuff and whatever, let's move on to how I actually attach the camera via a ball head. All right, so Joby makes these cool adapters that just snap in. They're like 40 bucks though, so I decided to 3D print one based on a design I found online. I'll put a link to that in the description. Use these flange nuts and it's like a $5 adapter. And it, it goes in, it doesn't really snap in that well and after playing with the sizing on it, I couldn't get it to work quite correctly. Nonetheless, it fits, friction fits there pretty well, so probably would hold it up decently. That's my old camera, the Canon T2i. So that's how it works, you just slide it in. I wouldn't really trust it the other way since I haven't gotten to, to, to snap in correctly, but your results may vary, might work, work out fine. It's a pretty cross-effective solution really. And there it is, just adjusting everything one-handed. Obviously it would work out better if I was using both my hands, but I was using the other one to film. All right, so that worked okay, but I also decided to buy this, this Joby ball head adapter. It's a 3K adapter. It is fairly expensive, but it does work pretty well. Snaps in and out. I mean, it looks beautiful, but it, it should for the price, the kind of prices they're charging. Roll it in, looking good. So let's do, let's do a little FPV view. Take it off my normal tripod thing, flexible tripod thing. Put it in. And you can hear it snap in nicely. Obviously it's going everywhere because it's not locked down correctly. Take a little view of myself. And once you have it hooked up right, you can take a view of your fingers, box cutter, etc., etc. You can even look at my, my milling machine from here. So that'll be nice to have another Another vantage point. Forward and backwards. Oh, it's my uh, my fume extractor, so I'll put a link to that in the upper right hand corner. And looks like it'll be a good good mount for that. Having two hands ready here, that's great. Thanks to uh, thanks to my wife for filming this. Looking good. And you can make out all kinds of nice pans etc etc perhaps at some point i will put a motor on this to make some sort of automatic camera stand thing i think that'd be pretty awesome but i've always got about 20 projects on my mind at, at any one point on that note if you enjoyed this you might poke around on my channel i'm sure you'll find something that you enjoy and probably some stuff you don't like quite as much so either way i'm sure it'll be fun feel free to give me a like on this video subscribe or even leave a comment thanks so much for watching this is Jeremy Cook, signing off.